It's time for another update from planet Mars. More exciting discoveries, intriguing news from the Martian helicopter, and an incredible discovery of a huge water deposit we never knew existed. Ok, wait up. Editing Anton. Last minute changes. Now I had to make some updates for the video because we have some news about the helicopter. And you can probably guess what it is, but we'll talk about this in a few minutes. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Let's talk about some of these recent discoveries from just the last few months, and of course about what all of this means when it comes to understanding this beautiful red planet. But as in some of the previous videos about Mars, I once again wanted to start this with a strange image and a somewhat interesting video. And so here we have an image recently captured by the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, an unusual series of very strange lines carved into the Martian surface as if someone dragged something really heavy on the surface. And not surprisingly, this is something that formed over time through very minute motions of surface ice on top of the Martian soil. But in this case, this motion very likely took a really long time, possibly even several thousand years. And more importantly, these patterns were captured in non-polar regions of Mars, providing evidence that Martian ice seems to be present in a lot of different regions, not just in the Martian poles. And then we also have this really cool time-lapse from the Martian Curiosity rover. This time-lapse, representing only 17 frames, was captured by two cameras and was actually filmed right before the solar conjunction. Or basically the period when the Sun blocks Mars from planet Earth and does not allow scientists to communicate with rovers or any Martian missions for something like two weeks. And so just for funsies, the researchers decided to make these time-lapses, basically showing us 12 hours on the surface of Mars. But what's really cool here is, well, actually right here. Inside these images we get to see various effects that anyone would experience on the surface of Mars. This unusual black dot, that's literally a cosmic ray hitting the camera. A very powerful cosmic ray that on Earth would be blocked by the atmosphere. But just the time lapse itself is obviously really cool. You can find both of these videos in the links in the description. Ok, now for the actual discoveries, and let's start with, I guess, the biggest one. The discovery based on the radar survey of a really large region known as Medusa Fosse. It actually kind of resembles this, and it was always believed to be the result of volcanic activity. Here is roughly where this region is located, and the important part here is that it's basically on the equator. And so during the recent radar observations, researchers were able to scan underneath the ground here, collecting a lot of data based on the reflections of the radar from just underneath the surface. This was done using the Marsis radar on top of Mars Express. And what's super intriguing here is that they found these unusual anomalies that resembled something we've seen previously very close to the Martian polar caps. And back then, very similar observations were interpreted to be, very likely, huge deposits of thick ice. But in the polar regions this is maybe expected. We do observe a lot of ice on the surface here, even though technically this is CO2 ice, with most of this ice changing throughout the year. But the discovery of ice underneath suggested that it's maybe water ice. But now very similar observations were discovered here. And though at first it was not actually known what kind of deposits these were, because it could have been volcanic or maybe just sediments or even sand, by using modeling and computer simulations, the only way scientists were able to create similar structures was basically if this was water ice. Water ice was the only substance that contained enough density and enough structure support to make all of this possible. With this region known as Eumenides dorsum, very likely containing the highest and the thickest deposit of ice. But all of this buried underneath several hundred meters of actual Martian crust and thus very likely stored inside for billions of years. And when I read about this, almost right away, it reminded me of Total Recall. If you watched the movie, you might remember that there's basically a hidden layer of ice that the government is trying to hide from everyone because they're trying to control the population. And if all of this ice is melted, it supposedly instantly terraforms Mars. Which is exactly what Arnold Schwarzenegger does in the movie. He presses a magic alien button, which starts the terraforming process. Now obviously no signs of aliens or magic buttons, but surprisingly, actual evidence for enormous amounts of ice. How much ice? Apparently enough to potentially create a tiny ocean on the entire Mars. Some of this ice is at least 3.7 kilometers thick, and so if melted, it might create an ocean that's approximately 3 meters deep. Not a very large ocean, but still that means that there is a lot of water hidden underneath. And this discovery by itself is important for one reason. It potentially finally solves the mystery of what happened to Martian water billions of years ago. 
Because here on Mars, we have so many signs of water from a lot of previous events, even signs of tsunami, something you can learn more about in one of the videos in the description. But where exactly did this water go? Did it just evaporate and escape into space? Did it get locked up in rock through some kind of a chemical process? Or is it hiding underneath? And this evidence here does suggest that huge amounts of it is very likely still underneath. But unfortunately for any potential crewed mission, it's going to be beyond our reach. Some of it is actually several kilometers deep inside the ground, and so it would be extremely difficult to reach this. Nevertheless, one day, if we do actually find a way to somehow mine this, it might actually help us somehow transform Mars into something a little bit more hospitable. Just like in the Total Recall. Okay, yeah, it's unlikely to be like that. And Mars is unlikely to turn into an Earth-like planet overnight. But nevertheless, this is a really exciting discovery, potentially solving a lot of mysteries. And that of course includes a lot of other discoveries about evidence of all of this water from the past. Based on all of the evidence we see on the surface, it looks like Mars did not lose its water in a single episode. It very likely was something that happened over billions of years, with several episodes resurfacing water and making Mars once again liquid for at least some time. And so here we have a lot of evidence of flowing water that happened several times in the past, with a lot of these river valleys actually containing extremely different age. And so in one of the recent studies, researchers were able to determine an approximate age of some of these river valleys by using an intriguing dating technique using asteroid craters. And so by using several of these craters and determining the average age based on the size and what we know about craters from objects like the moon, here it was discovered that some of these rivers were hundreds of millions of years apart. And some of these regions even contained several major episodes of flowing water, suggesting major climatic changes that happen on the planet once in a while. With some of this evidence basically presenting Mars in a slightly different way. It might have had lakes and rivers, and rivers in this case had a lot of flowing water, but this might have been an extremely rare event. With Mars staying more or less arid and dry for the large portion of the time in between these dramatic climatic changes with additional evidence suggesting that the erosion rate for rivers was extremely low, suggesting that the rivers were very likely flowing very infrequently, remaining dry completely, which by itself presents Mars in the last 3 billion years in a very different way. It might have actually been kind of similar to deserts like Sahara, for the most part being dry and extremely arid, but once in a while experiencing these very dramatic river flows and even a large expansion of lakes and oceans, which would last for some time, but disappear with time afterwards. With all of this very likely driven by some kind of a Milankovitch cycle, something that happens possibly every 100,000 years or so, due to the orbit of the planet around the solar system. And if correct, this would have important implications for the potential existence of life on Mars. Life here would have a lot of trouble developing and evolving if this planet was mostly dry and desert-like for most of its existence. And so these occasional water flows would not really give life enough chance to evolve. And so instead of providing life with a long-term stability like on planet Earth, Mars instead seemed to have a lot of variability and was thus a lot more inhospitable compared to planet Earth. But that's just based on one study, and so we'll probably find out more in some of the future follow-up studies that might explore this a little bit more. But using very similar data, a lot of other scientists actually discovered something else about Mars that was a bit surprising. Here, by once again comparing the surface features with the data from ground-penetrating radar, especially focusing on regions like Elysium Planitia, researchers identified at least 40 different volcanic events, with some surprisingly only happening a few million years ago. And considering the recent data from the now-retired InSight mission that actually did establish that there seems to be even signs of potential volcanic activity today, you can learn more about this in the video in the description. What this essentially suggests is that these volcanic eruptions seem to be a lot more frequent and seem to also happen in recent geologic times. And more importantly, they're very likely the reason why some of the groundwater is suddenly released on the surface, possibly forming signs of these rivers and lakes. Especially because this recent study even found signs of the interaction of lava and water visible in some of the rocks on the surface. And some of these formations were millions of years old, not billions. Once again implying recent volcanism and recent releases of underground water. Making Mars a somewhat exciting place and potentially not as dead as we always believed it to be. And last but not least, let's talk about the Martian helicopter and how it seems to be still going even though there have been a few problems in the last few months. 
And okay, yeah, it's not really going anywhere anymore, so I'm sorry for bad news. But let's first discuss what I was going to say in the video, and then we'll discuss new updates. So first of all, as of making of this video, this helicopter has now finished its 72nd flight. It was supposed to only fly for 30 days and complete 3 flights. It's now been over a thousand days and over 72 flights. And so this team right here achieved something absolutely incredible. But despite of this, there have been a few glitches. Actually, one of the first major glitches occurred during the 52nd flight. This was in April of 2023, and after this flight, the helicopter actually landed somewhere where it was not able to communicate with Perseverance. It was essentially just a little bit too far away, but this was technically done on purpose. It landed in the location where the Perseverance is sort of headed, and so the helicopter handlers decided to stay ahead of the Perseverance by making it land somewhere where the rover was headed. And so for two weeks, the helicopter was just patiently waiting. And after 61 days, the communication was re-established and it seemed to be still working. Intriguingly, at this time, it landed very close to a bunch of pebbles, something that the scientists using the Perseverance rover really wanted to take a look at. So they basically changed the direction in order to take a look at those pebbles and to take a few samples. Flight 53 is when the second problem started. It experienced a never-before-seen error that forced the helicopter to land suddenly. And it was unclear what happened here. But despite the error, it was still working, with Ingenuity continuing its mission. Then, more recently, during the Flight 69, this was on December of 2023, it established a new distance record. 706 meters or 2300 feet the longest distance it's covered so far. But a little bit after this, during the Flight 71, it once again had a major glitch, a technical problem that basically forced it to terminate its flight. And once again, it's not clear what happened here. And during the most recent flight, Flight 72, even though the helicopter was able to fly successfully, the communication between the rover and the helicopter once again terminated for unknown reasons. It's unclear right now why this happened, but as of January 20, 2024, there seems to be some communication, it's just unclear why it stopped. And so right now we have no idea if it's still going to be working this year, but it's not dead just yet. Okay, no, it's dead now. And so as the editing Anton mentioned before, uh, the helicopter is officially now basically dead. Okay, not that dead, it's broken. Not the whole thing, but a major part of its blade. As NASA has recently learned by looking at the images received after the 72nd flight. A major chunk of the blade is definitely missing. And this must have happened during the recent flight. Now there's still communication with the rover and it still seems to work, it even has power. But because the flight is no longer possible, this is officially the end of the mission. Making January 18 the last flight of the helicopter. But considering the fact that it flew 14 times farther and 33 times longer than originally planned, with a total flight time of over 2 hours, that is just absolutely insane. It actually seems to have fared better than any of the t-shirts I produced 2 years ago when the mission just started. But I guess the question is, do we know anything about what happened and how exactly did this break? Well, the short answer right now is no. During the 72nd flight, the helicopter was essentially performing a hop. It rose to about 40 feet or 12 meters in the air and hovered for 5 seconds. But as it was descending, the communication suddenly cut out and one of the last images revealed this. And so either the blade struck the ground, possibly breaking, or maybe they were just getting really old and it just came off in the process. From the image we can tell that approximately a quarter of the blade is missing. But because the data from this flight was not saved, we're not really going to know exactly what happened. Here's actually one of the last images taken during the previous flight, and this looks absolutely gorgeous. But the thing is, Perseverance is sort of headed in this direction, and so it might be able to snap a shot of the helicopter for the last time in the next few weeks. But it is going to be moving past it, and so after a few months, NASA is going to completely lose all contact with the helicopter, officially and in the mission. But just the fact that it survived so much in the last two years is really impressive. It survived dust storms, it survived a Martian winter, it was covered in Martian dust and then wasn't, and it even had a broken sensor that was able to ignore completely. But even after several major problems with computers and software problems, it was doing just fine. And if it wasn't for this broken blade, it's quite likely it would have been going for quite some time. So an absolutely incredible mission that's going to be extremely hard to beat for anyone trying this again using similar designs. But more importantly, all of these flights collected so much data about extraterrestrial helicopters 
that NASA researchers have now started testing next-generation helicopter blades and have been actively applying all of these lessons to other important helicopter mission that's going to be landing on Titan. And so the Dragonfly mission have been redesigned just a little bit based on the lessons from Mars, with some of the future missions to Mars also very likely featuring more helicopters, with some potentially able to collect all of the samples deposited by Perseverance instead of using a wheeled rover like the ones we're used to. And so basically this beautiful mission potentially completely changed their approach to exploring other planets. It looks like helicopters are surprisingly efficient and seem to be much more effective than a typical rover, not to mention cheap. But what's not cheap is of course a retrieval mission, and this is where we kind of have our first problem. Some of the recent independent investigations discovered that the sample return mission might be just a little bit too expensive, and so unless NASA is able to redesign the mission and make it cheaper, it might not actually happen anytime soon. And so the samples that Perseverance has been collecting and leaving on the surface might stay here for some time. But hopefully, one day in the future, someone is able to recover them. Until then, the surface of Mars is going to be covered with these lightsabers that's going to be lying there collecting dust. But at least for now, that's kind of all I wanted to mention. Check out some of the previous recent studies and recent discoveries from Mars in some of the videos in the description. And thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back next time when we talk about Mars once again, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. One of them does contain the Martian helicopter. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.